hurry, hurry, step right this way, folks, for the most extravagant array of refreshment goodies ever assembled under one roof. Enjoy breathtaking, taste-tempting candies of finest quality. Enjoy popcorn exploded into tender, delicious, crispy bites of crunchy goodness. Enjoy the tops in cool, refreshing soft drinks. If you want to enjoy some refreshments, this is your opportunity. There will now be a short intermission. Our refreshment stand, your wish is our command. So the coffee we serve there is pure perfection. is Orson Welles. I'm speaking for the Mercury Theater, and what follows is supposed to advertise our first motion picture. Citizen Kane is the title, and we hope it can correctly be called a coming attraction. It's certainly coming, coming to this theater, and I think our Mercury actors make it an attraction. I'd like you to meet them. Speaking of attractions, well, the chorus girls are certainly an attraction, but frankly, ladies and gentlemen, we're just showing you the chorus girls for purposes of ballyhoo. It's a pretty nice ballyhoo. But here are some of our real Mercury people. This is the first time you've seen most of them on the screen. Hey, uh, give Joe a little light. Thanks. Now smile for the folks, Joe. Smile. Joseph Cotton, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Joseph Cotton. I think you're going to see a lot of him. Here's Ruth Warwick, whom I know you love. Ruth. Look at the camera, Ruth. <laughs> we caught Ruth with her hair up. And here's somebody you've all heard on the radio, so I don't have to tell you he's wonderful. Ray Collins. Dorothy Comengore is a name I'm going to repeat. Dorothy Comengore. I won't have to repeat it much longer. You'll be repeating it. And here's George Kouluris, who's a grand actor. I'll say that name again. George Kouluris. Watch it. Here comes Everett Sloan. Look out, Everett. Oops. Everett Sloan, ladies and gentlemen. He isn't necessarily a comedian. And here's one of the best actors in the world. Agnes Moorhead. I've said a lot of nice things, but Erskine Sanford deserves some more. Erskine. Erskine Sanford. So does Paul. Paul. Paul Stewart, everybody. Citizen Kane is a modern American story about a man called Kane, Charles Foster Kane. I don't know how to tell you about him. There's so many things to say. I'll turn you over instead to the characters in the picture. As you'll see, they feel very strongly on the subject. Charles Foster Kane is... <laughs> sure, he started the war. But do you think if it hadn't been for Mr. Kane, the United States would have the Panama Canal? Charles Foster Kane is nothing more or less than a communist. Kane. Governor, listen, when the voters of this state and Mrs. Kane learn what I found out about Mr. Kane and a certain little blondie named Susan Alexander, he couldn't be elected dog catcher. I'm going to skin Mr. Charles Foster Kane alive. I'm going to marry him next week at the White House. Emily, I hear you've been stepping out with Charlie Kane. I... Of course I love him. I gave him $60 million. Well, of course I love him. He's the richest man in America. That's what all the girls say about him at first. But you know, <laughs> I can't help but admire him. He's crazy. He's wonderful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what you'll think about Mr. Kane. I can't imagine. You see, I play the part myself. Well, Kane is a hero and a scoundrel, a no account and a swell guy, a great lover, a great American citizen and a dirty dog. It depends on who's talking about him. What's the real truth about Charles Foster Kane? I wish you'd come to this theater when Citizen Kane plays here and decide for yourself. beneath the sea to challenge the unknown. When the forces of nature erupt, the ocean floor opens up. 
hurling five men and one woman 15 miles straight down to a place that exists on no map and yet holds the key to man's future. Latitude Zero. Where the past merges with the present to predict the future. The Alpha launched June 21st, 1805. Since you question everything, I don't expect you to believe there's so much of anything else you're about to see. I am 204 years old. The Alpha is northeast of you, and course for latitude zero. Those are torpedoes. Search missiles. Well, do something, will you? At Latitude Zero, good battles evil, using the incredible weapons of tomorrow. Activate your elevation belts. I've seen pictures of the moon that looked a lot more inviting. Right. Say, Captain, you ever been here before? First time. Well, that's great. How do we find Dr. O'Connor? We'll have to search. Could be in that tower. Live an adventure beyond your wildest imagination as mankind fights for its very survival. Share every exciting moment of the incredible world of Latitude Zero where man's future explodes 15 miles beneath the Earth. You have five minutes till showtime. Quality hamburgers, the most popular snack in the country. We serve them plain or garnished to your taste. Some things are worth going through hell for. Some things are even worth dying for. If you live long enough to enjoy them. Sally Savalas, chief watchdog of a diamond empire with the toughest security in the world. It's all the proof I need. And I'll tell you something else, Chambers. I think they've stolen diamonds before. And I think that someone very close to Bradley, and to yourself, was used to smuggle them out of the country. Peter Fonda, middleman in a multi-million dollar caper. If anything goes wrong, he gets it from both sides. When it comes to my life or someone else's, there's nothing to discuss. Christopher Lee, the hitman. <laughs> Hugh O'Brien, the organizer. Nobody offered you 20 grand each to go on a picnic, Chilton. You're here to pick up diamonds and don't you forget it. O.J. Simpson, the inside man. And Maud Adams. Honey, you're going to get all dry sitting out there. She's just along for the ride and the thrills. They have to smash an impregnable fortress, and it's tough luck if you get in their way. I 
I'd join you for a raid, not a massacre. Getting the diamonds was only impossible. Keeping them will take a miracle. Telly Savalas, Peter Fonda, Christopher Lee, Hugh O'Brien, O.J. Simpson, and Maud Adams. The Diamond Mercenaries. Finish the job. Guide presented as a public service by this theater's management to help you select your motion picture entertainment? Well, that's what it is. And we urge you to learn these rating symbols and use them as a guide for you and your family. G means suggested for general audiences, all ages. M, suggested for mature audiences, parental discretion advised. R, restricted, persons under 16 not admitted unless accompanied by parent or adult guardian. X, persons under 16 will not be admitted. This seal in advertising indicates that the film was approved under the Motion Picture Code of Self-Regulation. Have mercy on this poor, unfortunate creature. In old Gothic Europe, they had two burning passions, witch hunting and devil worship. Practice the black arts. They worship the devil. They're all slaves to Count Karnstein, and he is their evil master. Do you know what I want more than anything else? To meet Count Karnstein. <laughs> They look alike. They dress alike. Two identical beauties. But one of them has the very devil in her. For you, all pleasures should be supreme. These are the men they call the Brotherhood. Seek out the devil worshippers by burning them! And this is the sister who is about to enter the devilhood. Look. What do you see? <gasps> we are the undead. Immortal. The devil has sent me twins of evil. Maria now, unsuspected, good and kind. Think of the havoc you can cause. I thought it was your sister that I loved, but now I know.